Hi guys, it's me Tazra HD and welcome to a new series and it's called Classic Incident Analysis where hopefully in many episodes I'm going to look at controversial crashes, great overtakes from the past and just give my analysis and thoughts on how it all happened, who was at fault and all of that stuff and today we are going to start off with probably two of the most controversial crashes in the history of Formula One. Senna versus Prost at Suzuka in 1989, and then Senna versus Prost again at Suzuka in 1990. Now, first off, we are gonna start with the 1989 crash, and we start here with Ayrton Senna's on board in the McLaren. So, you can see here, coming into the entry of 130R, and Ayrton at this point, was going a lot faster than Prost and was catching very, very quickly. Now, as they come into 130R, Ayrton carries a lot more speed through the corner and gains quite a lot in the run to the chicane. Now, you have to remember the 130R back in 1989 was a proper corner. It was not like it is today, where 130R today is a kink on a straight. It's not really a corner. Back then, 130R was a proper corner because it didn't have really any runoff on the exit and it was very tight on entry. So you had to either break or slightly lift off if you were going to go through the corner as fast as possible. You could not really take it flat out in a Formula 1 car back in 1989. So, through the corner, Ayrton gains quite a bit of time and then they come to the exit of 130R. Now, Ayrton at this point is right in the slipstream. He's right up behind Alain Prost and he knows that he's got to make a move soon if he is going to pass him for the win of the Grand Prix. And... At this point, Ayrton knows that he has to go for it at the final chicane. Now, this final chicane is not, in, it's not that similar to the final chicane right now at Suzuka. The final chicane at Suzuka back in 1989 was a bit different. It was uh, shorter in terms of the distance between the first part and the second part of the chicane. And also... You could break a lot later into the chicane than you could with the current chicane we have at Suzuka. So going down the inside was definitely a massive possibility in a Formula 1 car back then at the final chicane. Now, at this point, at the pit entry line, Ayrton is now starting to go for the move. And as we cut off board you can see that Ayrton is definitely going to get this move done as long as Alain Prost decides not to turn into him and have a crash. And at this point, Ayrton has about three quarters of his car alongside Alain Prost. And again, if Prost doesn't turn in, Ayrton is absolutely going to get this move done. But of course, Alain was not going to let Ayrton come through. Of course, they were battling at this race for the World Championship of, of 1989. And Prost, after all of the things that had gone on earlier in the relationship between him and Ayrton Senna, he was not prepared to let Ayrton Senna just fly through, win the race, and win the World Championship. And Alain Prost was not going to let Ayrton through. Simple as that. So Alan, of course, at the final chicane, decided to just turn in. And you can see that right now that Prost is starting to turn in. And then at this point is where the contact is made. And you can see at this point that Senna has almost all of his car alongside Alan's car. So he clearly deserves to be in there. It's not like Ayrton was coming from way too far back and he didn't have enough of his car alongside. He absolutely did. But Alan would not let Senna through and was not going to not going to give way and was going to turn in no matter whether Senna was there or not. And then of course 
at the final chicane we had this famous picture and of course after this Ayrton Senna got a push start he came back after a new front wing won the Grand Prix but then of course got disqualified for getting a push start and not going uh, through the chicane the way you are supposed to meaning that Alain Prost went on to win at the time his third world championship for McLaren but when it comes to this incident for me absolutely 100% Alain Prost was at fault because Ayrton again had enough of his car alongside to deserve space but Prost turned in for me on purpose because he was adamant that he would not lose to Ayrton Senna that day at Suzuka and he absolutely on purpose turned in, knew he was there and took Ayrton out of the Grand Prix almost and got him because of that crash and because of what happened after he really did get him disqualified and it is 100% Alain's fault but Ayrton would of course one year later get his revenge on Alain Prost again at Suzuka. Now in qualifying Ayrton Senna qualified on pole position and Alain Prost qualified in P2 but Ayrton's pole position slot on the grid was moved to the dirty side of the grid, the left hand side of the grid as you look at the picture right now. Now as you guys will know pole position at Suzuka is normally on the right hand side the clean side of the grid and at basically every racetrack pole position is on the clean side of the grid but that day it wasn't because Jean-Marie Belleste did not want Ayrton Senna beating Alain Prost so Prost despite qualifying in P2 was put on the clean side of the grid was put on the clean side of the grid and because of that, at the start, of course, obviously, Prost got a way better start and got straight into the lead of the Grand Prix. And at this point, Alain is clearly ahead going down to turn one. But because of what happened during that weekend and because of the animosity between Ayrton and Alain, especially with their battles at Suzuka, Ayrton was not going to let Alan come out on top that day in the same way Alan was not going to let Ayrton come out on top the year before at the same track. Now, going down into turn one, Alan at this point is clearly ahead. He's absolutely clearly ahead of Ayrton Senna. And because Alan is on the racing line, he is always going to take more speed into this corner but only if Ayrton actually does give up on the corner and you know sits behind Alan for the first lap or so but of course Ayrton did not do that if he did though then the drivers behind Gerhard Berger, Mansell and I believe Nelson Piquet in the Benetton would have closed in a lot on Ayrton in the apex of the corner but of course Ayrton did not lift off, he did not give way and was adamant in taking out Alain Prost and at this point is where contact was made. Then of course the bodywork fell off as the contact was made and then they were in the gravel together and it's pretty clear to see that Ayrton deliberately took out Alain Prost because he was not on the racing line. He was not far enough alongside to really realistically into that corner make a move. And it's clear that Ayrton had only one goal in mind and that was to take out Alain Prost so he could go on to win his second world title. Now two things for me... Now there are two things that I'm curious about when it comes to this 1990 incident between Alain Prost and Ayrton Senna at Suzuka. One, how did not many people not really tell that Senna deliberately took Prost out? It's pretty clear to see that Senna just floored it down to turn one and didn't even think about breaking. But also, when a year later Ayrton admitted after he won his third world title at Suzuka in 1991, when he admitted that he did it on purpose, why was there no 
driving ban or penalty for, for Ayrton Senna. I, I don't get that because if that happened today, you know, an admittance of deliberately taking out a driver, even though it was a year ago, that driver would be penalised with some sort of ban of driving or quite a big fine at the very, very least. But even though he admitted doing it on purpose, he didn't get any sort of ban. And I, I really don't see why he didn't get one. Now, I will say I am a big fan of Ayrton Senna, who isn't, to be honest. He is, for me, the best driver of all time at this current point. But you have to say... After that accident, he really should, even a year after when he finally admitted to doing it on purpose, he really should have had some sort of penalty because it was one of the most, if not the most, disgraceful thing we have seen in Formula 1 history. But of course he didn't and he went on to win the World Championship for 1990 and then the year later in 1991. But these two crashes between Senna and Prost really did shape the history of Formula 1 and you can't really tell the story of Formula 1 without telling the story of Suzuka 1989 and 1990. And even in 100 years time we are still going to remember this clash between these two drivers because it was so great and just so so controversial. But guys, let me know in the comments section, what is your opinion of the two incidents? Was Prost at fault for the first one and was Senna absolutely, you know, disgraceful for what he did in the second one? And also let me know, what were your personal thoughts of the rivalry between Ayrton and Alain Prost? But guys, that has been it for this video. If this video does do well, then the next episode, this time next week, will be about Michael Schumacher and his controversial incidents as well. But also guys, don't forget to subscribe for more content like this and also smash the like button for more content like this as well. But until my next video guys on Wednesday, talking about for the second time why Pierre Gasly should be dropped from Red Bull Racing, it has been me, Chazer HD. Goodbye.